fine collection of baked meats, fowl, white bread, cheese, and garden vegetables, thought Truth as she ate her fill. The Bardwells had not had such food for two full years. Her bed was so soft and deep that she fell onto it only half undressed. She slept, she slept so heavily that Sister Quisenberry had to shake her awake. It's ten o'clock, my dear. My uncle has bathed and gone to town with my grandfather to buy train tickets. I've heated the water for thee in the kitchen, and while thee soaks, I will tend to thy clothing as best I can. Thank you, thee. Oh, thank thee, was all Truth could say. Oh, to smell soap and feel warm water again. By two o'clock, Truth and her uncle were seated in a railroad car behind a black steam locomotive waiting in the Hagerstown station to travel north. Side by side, on soot-stained red plush seats, they looked out the window at the platform where blue-clad Union soldiers either lounged or walked about, talking and exercising. More soldiers sat in their very car just across the aisle, ahead of them and behind them. One soldier, a big man with bushy blonde side whiskers and an arrogant manner, now asked to see their passes for civilian travel. Friend Quisenberry had been able to obtain passes for them by telling the authorities in Hagerstown that Matthew Bardwell and Truth were Indiana Quakers on their way to New York City. They were supposedly going there to consult a doctor in hopes of finding a cure for his inability to speak since he'd had a seizure in the spring. Friend Quisenberry said that they'd seen a Maryland doctor and were being sent north by him. Truth traveled with her uncle as his spokesperson. Truth now showed the soldier their passes as she had shown them earlier to the train conductor. The man examined them, shook his head, handed them back, and told her, Thank you, Missy. I hope your uncle finds a doctor who can do him some good. True said, We hope so. We've come a long way from Indiana. What part of it? I'm from Indiana myself. Just hearing you talk makes me feel homesick. Have you ever been on a trade before? Truth told him the name of her village and said, No, sir, we got here by wagon. She dared to ask, Will there be another battle soon? More than likely. And more than likely in Virginia again. A soldier sort of mill around and get sent here and there. When a Johnny Reb army runs smack dab into us or some Confederate or Union general decides it's time to fight, we fight. Was the at Gettysburg? There and at other places. When will the war be over? When one side gives up, that'll be the only way. Sit back now and try not to get sick from all the cigar smoke. If you do, open the window and throw up. Lots of folks do that. Don't be ashamed. I thank thee. Truth thought she had best stop talking before she said too much. She was relieved when the train whistle suddenly shrieked and the iron wheels beneath them began to turn. They were on their way to rescue Robert.